when Arcane goes out, we will get death threats. Doesn't matter if we win every award in the world, we will inevitably piss someone off who really, 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 really loves whichever character yeah. is an Arcane, and they will want to murder us. I love it, but, you know, I'm still anxious, right? We're two to three weeks to the launch, so maybe I'm completely fooling myself and it's gonna flop. Uh, Let's have a look at that trailer for Riot Games' this upcoming animated series. So, this is like League of Legends Christmas right now? Yeah. <gasps> Holy If it's even like half as good as that trailer is. Oftentimes the question is like, how do you make something good? How do you know it's good? What if you don't know these characters? What if you don't know anything about League of Legends? Would you still engage in this? Hopefully we succeeded in the biggest thing, which was making League of Legends fans proud of their investment into the IP. Jinx framed against this beautiful stained glass that was probably once like colorful and cheerful and happy, but now it's shattered and broken. The fact that somebody can make an hour long reaction video off of like the smallest teasers that we've made is impressive. Let's have a closer look at this bit of animation because they're doing doubling. They're taking the character model and copying it gun barrel here, gun barrel here, gun barrel here, which is a technique that's stolen directly from 2D animation. We dissected it like every frame, like it was spot on uh, most of the time. Her jaw unclenches as she opens her lips. I mean, I can't imagine how much of those are gonna exist after we've released a whole season of Arcane, like what everybody's gonna say and what everybody's gonna do and think about it. It's not just a story or a project that goes out and if you don't like it, c'est la vie. It's like, no, it has to be good because it's this thing that our audience cares about so much, that we care about so much. So it's, you know, it's not easy to make decisions when you have that in the back of your head. I have never worked on animation before this project, which I actually always thought was a detriment, but I was recently told that that was actually something they were looking for, so I was like, oh, good. <laughs> That's pretty pissed. That's a little too pissed. They put so much detail and so much thought into the animation, you really do want to match it, you know? Like, you want it to be just as detailed, just as nuanced, and um, sound as cool as it looks. So Andy is the sound effects mixer. So all the cool design, the weapons. The sound is what I think really connects for a lot of people. Like they may not realize it. Same thing with like music. Music is kind of like a universal language. There's something about that, you know, sonic thing that gets in your ear that really, I think, brings helps bring stuff to life. Like when I go see a scary movie, I I cover my ears, man. I don't I don't cover my eyes, right? Council Italis' proposal for peace. What was that, five? Yeah. For everything. Split, split the diff. I'm gonna you. Drop the gun! The goal is clarity in the end. You know, it's supposed to be like not noticed in a way. You know, if it's noticed, maybe it's done, you know, it's done wrong because it's like scenes are believable when people believe that they're in them. Um, Sorry, my watch went off. Totally ruined your soundbite, dude. <laughs> Shit. Redo. We should have had shirts sound, that said Sound Bros. Arcane Sound Bros. I'm with stupid. Yeah. We, we make the noises. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. To H150. A giant empty room. This whole room for just Brad and I. <sighs> Thanks, COVID. You know, for just Developing the soundscapes and kind of getting some temp mixes down. These rooms are perfect for that. And then we can go to the stage and kind of fine tune things. 
It's very identical to Brad's. Exactly the same, actually, except for I have some plants. I'm a big plant guy, but obviously everything would die in this room, so I had to find the best looking fake plants. Target. Target's got some great fake plants. Oh, uh, these are uh, motion picture MPSC awards. These were for uh, Blade Runner and uh, a game Resident Evil. And hopefully there'll be a third one there when you come back and film us for season two or something. <laughs> Sound design, when you're working in animation, you're working completely from, from scratch for everything. And a lot of times it's easy to just kind of do the bare minimum uh, of what's needed for the scene because that's just sort of the aesthetic. Um, but for this, from day one, it was let's create a really, really authentic sounding production track. Brad and I's job ultimately is to work on the relationship between dialogue, music, and effects to help sell a believable story. I remember in our second episode, there was this council scene where Jace has to kind of answer for his unsanctioned research. And that scene just did not work for me in the animatics and everything. And, and, and I looked at this script page and I was like, no, this is, these are the right words. Like, we're, we're saying the right things. The animation looked great. I was like, what is the problem? The materials were far more dangerous than I was aware of. Sounds like how I it was recorded my in were against Academy uh, regulations. the VO booth. What I did endangered people. It was reckless. But to sell the sheer mass of this room, you know, you add reverb. It was revolutionary. Revolutionary how? All I see is a boy meddling with things he doesn't understand. The second there was that like feeling of the, the, the words just expanding into this eerie space it felt like every word just mattered so much more, you know? And that was the first time that scene really worked for me. Bee Gees, backgrounds. You know, backgrounds are, you know, what world is this character in? Uh, what's happening around them? What could be happening around them? The conversation with backgrounds is sort of like our wallpaper, kind of like lays the foundation. And then sometimes it's a combination of stuff that you've recorded in the field. We try to go out almost every, at least once a week or on the weekends. I'm, co I'm constantly recording. Well, my parents have this kind of four by five. But when I pitched down the recordings I did, I got this, the engine had this kind of repetitive I was like, that's basically the industrial zone. You know, the steam releases are cool little air compressor bursts pitched down. And then the Foley is really that next layer, right? Creating this whole level of realism. For animation, it's huge. The Foley crew was, um, our good buddies at One Step Up, Dan O'Connell, John Cucci, totally, totally crushed it. Each one of these tracks is, you know, somebody watching this scene and doing all the, the feet for that one character, going back, doing the feet for that next character. Footsteps, props, which is kind of like, this is a prop when you set it on the table and it has a sound. And then gear, which is like, you know, Vi has a certain jacket on with a buckle, and uh, that buckle makes a sound. You can kind of get a different feeling on each person. Um, mm -hmm. Brad and I come from a world of creating game assets and characters in game where Foley is a huge player in games. So, you know, our viewpoint on Foley is like, we need it and play it loud. You know, Dan and John and what they did is like, their stuff is always 90% there and it fits in and it's great. But sometimes you need to embellish it. The Foley on its own, it, it doesn't do what you need it to do, but like just the sound effects by itself.
and it doesn't have that realism and the texture that you need from like something that's that's real. So together. There was a lot of organic recordings and thought that went into sounds that came from the natural world. I kind of pick up everything that sounds cool and <laughs> just keep it. <coughs> the elk are just going to start running into the building <laughs> through the walls. <laughs> But I took that and sampled it out. 50 cal bullet. How about cassettes? Got a lot of weird shit. For me, the biggest thing was the uh, the magic, like the hex core, and this is like the beginning and the origin of magic of League of Legends, like creating something that totally sounded new and was the beginning, and it had to progress through the whole season. You know, I took some time and recorded some wine glasses. So this is pitched up and then thrown through a tremolator. And then it's also thrown through a Doppler. And then Brad messing with a bunch of different synthesizers and like, like a chimey tonal thing with uh, a choir. Kind of has both sounds intertwined into it. And then like shimmer, like the whole shimmer thing. The biggest player in the shimmer is actually, that's your voice. <laughs> Would that be um, hilarious if that's just how we talk? Elliot! Yeah! Uh, so just <laughs> <laughs> recording a ton of that stuff um, just kind of gave us this like weird palette of stuff to play with. You know, running it through uh, an impulse response. It's taking that and then adding like a liquid kind of bubbly component to it. But. The one thing about Brad and I is we we work together well. Like you create building blocks, as Riot likes to call mm -hmm. it. Taking those building blocks and building on top of that, and building more and more on top of that, and going six or seven steps beyond your first step, all of a sudden you've got something really cool. And then putting on your sound editor cap, it's like taking all that cool stuff that you made, putting it up against picture, and making really hard decisions about what to what to keep, what to get rid of. <laughs> Do you still listen to stuff on those swords hits? Uh, those sword the, the swipes? Carving through it? Yeah. Uh, no. Are you? I might play. What do we got? 3.30? We have half an hour. That was the initial design, which you kind of lose because it just sits in the register of the music. Any sound design can create amazing sounds, um, but to create clarity and to tell the story that the director is trying to put together. But you have to be able to to pivot a lot. So like these are kind of fireworks are recorded. Getting that sizzle on stuff. A nice little trick that I do is this this is basically just a volume graph. But what I like to do sometimes instead of tremulating the sound I'll draw it in like this. Uh, which I do a lot on creature vocals and stuff. But it basically gives you this <coughs> You see how it kind of cuts through a little bit? It's, it just blows me away. Like, they're like, hey, we need a sound for Savika's plasma blade, you know? And he's like, hold my beer. Uh, right now, I am at my parents' house in the north of Germany. This is one example of me thinking of, of the arcane story. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
there were definitely moments of being pretty overwhelmed for sure. I mean, um, speaking for myself, I'm, I'm the kind of person I work actually well under stress, except for when you have so many stressful things that you, that you feel like you lose oversight if that makes sense you, you know animation over there music over there voice talent thanks 75 profits have been plummeting i think will be nice uh on you know profits have been plummeting to kind of uh, uh to like yeah like have like those pop. and you don't know if the scripts for less episodes are working and the planning for season two and there definitely are those moments where you just <laughs> feels like it just is too much you know I, I think that's why the burnout rate for i think showrunners is like a hundred percent in general. Knowing that the show is going out in November, really, I think it won't be real to me until it actually goes out into the world. And right now, the thing that keeps me up at night is trying to make sure that uh, the next season doesn't disappoint. There's some other option, right? It's like die or, you know, like accept some things being imperfect, you know, or something like that. That's kind of like the other path, right? That would be the way that they could go back to humanity. Now I think we need to find a big structure. We feel we can simplify it. The big hope, I guess, with this trip to Fortiche is to lock down the final episodes of season two. The end that I won't talk about very much uh, is, is one that is complex. What else do you want to remove? You can remove also the... There's one thing about the ending that is new. We're like, oh, that, that's sort of the same beat we had in 206. Okay, that was sort of the thing we were hinging this whole episode around, and now it's not there anymore, so let's just redo the whole thing. This part, I think, is just a particularly hard part of stories. Getting from your middle to the, okay, on track, final run on the Death Star, you know, that kind of that location. It's so hard to wipe the slate clean on something. I think I just need to step back. I yeah. need to like try and figure this episode out without thinking about all the things that we've talked about. I know. But we also don't want the baby to go out, Alex. We don't want to murder this baby with our bathwater. Is that suggesting that we are filling it with more bathwater right now? A lot of bath water. We're not dumping out the bath water, we're adding bath water. Mm -hmm. The baby is steadily drowning. I'm circling the exact location of the problem. Because when you say, uh, this is a little uh, blurry or uh, there is a bug here, Sometimes it's difficult to just spot the right place and the right frame. As you can see, we can't see the, the shard behind the glass, but the glass is transparent, so we have to see it, so it's a problem. en arrière, s'il te plaît, j'ai l'impression d'avoir vu un bug. Non, juste au moment où, un petit peu avant, on aurait fait image par image. Fortiche et Arnaud et Pascal, I really, really, really trust them. Tu vois, regarde. Ah, il y a un trait, hein. Il y a un trait. Oui, mais c'est la question. D'accord, OK. Non, je crois que c'est ça. Their heart's in the right place, you know, like, you just know that they're always gonna err on the side of quality and passion. Son bras, il doit être allumé, là, comme ça, avec le... Où il est... Non, il est éteint. Ah, il est éteint. Il est censé être éteint. On peut toujours apporter quelque chose de plus. Et c'est ça qui est des fois un petit peu frustrant pour nous, parce qu'on est assez perfectionniste, c'est de se dire, bon, allez, là, on, on lâche, on ouais. lâche le clavier. Des fois, c'est un peu dur, ouais. Ouais. C'est la shot of the last episode. You locked the picture. Uh, it's not so, f totally lock. <laughs> <laughs> it's never, it's never, uh, never lock. <laughs> Until it's on Netflix. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Kind of wrap.
wrapping up last minute twe tweaky. You know it still makes sense? Yeah. People always say, oh, when you work on something, you leave a piece of yourself. In this case, it's just like, it, it, it definitely took a chunk out of me. I think the best thing that I could somehow do and hopefully add some value is make stuff where we ask relevant questions and where we can show people different perspectives. I am the monster you created. Well, for Vi and for Jinx, the central question is, can you ever forgive a monster? How far are you willing to go for your sibling? Is there a line where you just can't go for your sibling and you just have to say, sorry, but this is where I have to leave you? What could have been? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you just took out. Back. If there's anything that we can achieve with Arcane past just the sheer entertainment, if there's just some good questions to ask for all of us and find our own answers, man, that's, I think, the best thing Arcane could do. Now we're done. Oh, okay. <laughs>first media product in the history of the world to launch everywhere, including China, at the same time. And we got Netflix and Amazon to actually partner because we're live streaming on Twitch and enabling our players to restream it. Like crazy shit you'd only do at Riot ever that yeah. no one's ever done before. to welcome LT and Christian Link to the premiere stage. How many things have you spent six years on one project for in your life? One, one single thing <laughs> have you spent six years for before? Marriage? <laughs> there you go. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's been pretty crazy to realize that the day's finally come. You know, we've been working on this for a long time and uh, it's finally here. We certainly didn't expect anything on this caliber for the release of it, so it's very cool. It's just, I think, really important to us that we create something that our audience can be proud of. We're putting on this suit jacket. Okay, I'm not putting on trousers, though. That's where I draw the line. If I was somebody who was actually there, I would hate being followed by a robot. That being said, as the robot, I have no problems with putting somebody into a vaguely uncomfortable situation. That is, they have to talk to an iPad that is on a stick. I am 100% interrupting something here, haven't I? I saw you on YouTube! Wait, you actually know who the f I am? I saw you on YouTube! I'm a huge fan of your stuff. I watch all your videos. I'm a huge fan of your stuff. I mean, the dream and the hope was always that League was the start of so much more. But, you know, fan expectations only go up. They're high, so we uh, we hope to deliver. I'm lucky. I've, I've had a long association with Riot because I played Brom in League of Legends. Like, Wait, you're Brom? I'm oh, Brom. Oh my oh, God! How okay. is the strongest muscle? Oh <laughs> my there it is. God! Yeah, the, the responsibility of this is kind of scary because I mean, look, it's like the anticipation from the fans. It's just you can feel it. It's like tangible, even on the internet. You can just feel it. My agent sent me out for it, and I was like, oh, this is cool, you know. Uh, black kid, he's a scientist, he's super sick, you know? And then when I got in, I was like, oh, this is a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> oh, I know, you do remember me. I've been telling everyone. Thank you, amazing job. I'm sure you've been to a lot of premieres. This is much different, right, than most? It's a lot cooler than most, I gotta say. Jeez.
Okay. Okay. Doing it right. This is the, the, the production value. This is like so incredible. Well, how do you approach this challenge? Yeah, I don't know. I think the universal themes of hating someone you love and loving someone you hate is just very relatable. Yeah. Doing something like this, you never really know sort of what your what the end result is going to look like. But the team behind this is absolutely unbelievable. And since from day one, I knew that I wanted to be involved. I just can't wait to see what the players and what fans think of the show. I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, I've never been as proud of a job. Finally, now actually, it's out, and anyone tonight across the world can turn on Netflix and watch it. That makes me really happy. <laughs> it's a weird feeling. Should be very special, yeah. I think I'm gonna be too afraid to really see what the reactions are. I think I think I'm just gonna watch it, and then I'm just not gonna look online for as long as I can. We've poured like six years into this, you know. The idea of having to someone go, this is like, uh, I think it would just be brutal. All I can safely assume is that the league audience is gonna be unmerciful. <laughs> Which, whichever way yeah. that goes, you know? If they love it, they will probably send me baskets of food. Uh, if they hate it, they will send me baskets of shit. When Christian sent me the first cut of the last five minutes of episode three, I bawled. <laughs> I like straight, like ugly cried. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> sorry, I didn't even think about it. So many people work so hard trying to do justice to people's expectations and they're doing it because of this love you know, and sense of responsibility to not let players down. It just makes us incredibly proud to see you know, the reactions and see those things actually happening. We'll show them. We will show them all. super proud of the team. I'm super happy for Christian. And then all the people that helped make it happen, like hundreds of people worked on it to bring it together. Not to mention the thousands of writers that built the IP that we were then able to translate into this. So the feeling that we really wanted people to have is that we handled that IP with care and love. Love you, man. Oh, dude, I'm so happy with it, bro. How do you feel? I haven't looked at my phone at all today, so. I'm going on the assumption that everyone hates the show and we're canceled and this is the last night of joy we're gonna have in our lives. You probably haven't seen any of the reviews or anything. No, I haven't touched my phone and since I sat down, I don't wanna see it. You don't even want it, you're like, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna make, you're gonna be happy though. We'll still watch it. F1 review, That's cool. Netflix. Dude, I'm so proud of you, man. Well. My expectations were like, it's gonna be good. But after the finale, what a fool I was. It was 
so brilliant. Today we're taking a look at the new Netflix show Arcane, and I want to just start by saying it slaps. <laughs> oh! Holy shit. Oh! Oh, wow, that's, that's lit. I don't know, I'm so overwhelmed. Mainly gratitude. I'm so proud of what this team, like the, the excellence so exceeded my expectations and I just, I know very well how ridiculous this climb was. I literally said to him, I remember I said to him, if it goes down, we'll go down with the ship. I, I literally said, you can have my job. Like, Merci à Christian hein, pour euh, la confiance. The trust, you know, the trust of Christian in Fortish. At the very beginning of Fortish. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, everybody. Et maintenant, que la soirée commence! Il y a beaucoup de gens qui étaient investis dessus et je pense que. Ce qui a fait aussi la force et la qualité d'Arken, c'est que tout le monde était très passionné, a toujours été très très motivé. Quoi. Je pense qu'il y avait cette idée un peu de, de se dépasser, de ne pas rester sur ses acquis et de, de, de prendre des risques quelque part. Et je pense que ça, c'était payant hein, aussi. I was at dinner recently with the directors of Fortiche, and they said they're very happy right now because when they got into this industry, they really wanted to create something to be history of the animation world. And they were smiling and they were saying, it's such a relief that after six years now, they feel like they know they worked on something that is part of animation history. It doesn't matter if the project is like a wild success or it's doing fine or, or you know, worse than that. If anything, we've crafted something that pushes the animation world forward by a significant margin. It's nice getting above it all, huh? The fact that we can spend five hours in just Piltover and Zahn and then do it again in a second season before we start to zoom out of this one little corner of the world and this handful of characters. Just the possibility space is so wild. You know, Alex made a comment to me last night. He's like, I could see myself telling stories in this universe for the next 30 years. It's a small miracle that this TV show got made. And it's a, it's a smaller miracle that so many God tier artists came together to work on one project and you, you can't not be proud of what they did. So, yeah. The other blessing and a curse for me and Alex is like we're never satisfied and we always want it to be better. So no matter how much you think you might know about what's coming in season two, there's always gonna be tons of new stuff to discover. I think people are gonna be really excited about what they find. The reason why I joined Riot is because I like playing the game. I loved it. I think when Alex and I were starting to talk about making something like Arcane, we just thought that this should exist because we want to watch it. We love these characters. We love these worlds. I think maybe my favorite thing above all of Arcane is that I am very confident in saying that there's many people who work on Arcane right now that feel like they're working on the most important thing of their lives, like their careers. I feel like people feel like they're challenged, they're working on something that's gonna matter, they're gonna look back to and say, I'm, yes, like that's a proud moment of my life and I'm happy I worked on it. And that to me is probably the most important thing.